Today in this lecture, I will talk about how you can handle the web table in Selenium WebDriver. Okay, so for this example, I have created a small table. I have taken this reference from W3 School, and you can see I have a couple of web elements here. So if you see the first uh, column, I have certain check boxes. Okay, so there could be multiple requirement where you have to identify one web element, and you just need to click check box which is before that particular web element. So let's say you want to select one option which is Amazon. So you will find Amazon, then you have to check here, and then you have to click on some button. Right now this button will not do anything but in your application this button will do some further operation. There could be another requirement that you need to click on Amazon link. So let's say you need to click find first of all Amazon. Then you need to click on no more or you have to find Ola. Then you have to click on no more. So now you can see some kind of dependency that based on this company name or based on this contact or based on the country you need to traverse either in the forward direction or in the reverse direction. Now you can also have scenarios that where you need to identify or you need to find out whether Sun Microsystem is available within this table or not or maybe Ola is present within this table or not there could be n number of scenarios again you can consider this as a dynamic web table because we don't know Flipkart will come at the first place or at the last place Ola will come at the third row or the first row or the last row okay so we'll see how we can do this okay so let me show you how you can do this so for this first of all I will inspect this web element and let's identify the domain structure first of all so right now if you just uh, identify okay this is just one small TD td and td right so let me identify any of the web element so we'll first of all find it is inside a table okay and if you're familiar with table then we have something called table body right and you can see the complete body is getting highlighted right so let me just keep it here right and now if you open this td you can see i have multiple trs right tr1 tr2 tr3 4 5 6 and so on you can see these rows are getting highlighted so if i see the first row it is basically nothing but th th means table heading and you can see the moment I put mouse over, I can see all these columns are getting highlighted. So we will also validate the number of columns should be 5, 10. So it depends on our X path, we can easily identify. Then from the second row, we have the actual data. As you can see, this table row is getting highlighted. If I open each TD, so this is my first TD, as you can see. And if I open this TD, I can see this is the input box, right? Because this is a checkbox. In a similar way, this is just a text, so it is TD, TD, TD. In the last TD, if you notice, this TD also have one more. I will say hyperlink which is an anchor tag and it says no more right now it is referring to google.com because I just given some dummy link but you got the overall point right so in a similar way if I open the second row I will find the same structure so first of all we will write couple of xpath so that we can identify the specific rows number of columns which checkbox to click which links to click so watch the video till the end because you will understand so many things so it's not mandatory that it has to be in a table tag it can be in any other tags as well okay but concept will remain same so first of all let me quickly write one xpath okay and this xpath i will note down here and i will share this after the video or maybe in the description of this video so first of all i will just press ctrl f again guys if you're using any plugin you can do that i'm just writing first of all something called table and you can see i have four tables inside this complete application but the table which i'm looking for it has an id called customers Okay, so if I just copy this and I will say find a table which has ID equal to customers. Okay, you can see only one table is getting highlighted, which I will note down here. But in case if this ID have some numbers, okay, let's say customer one, customer three, customer four. In that case, you have to go with contains method or starts with or depends on the pattern that you find. So if you don't want to go with this, you can also write find a table which contains ID. And you can just mention the partial. I will just say customer. I will say just cust, which is also identifying the table. The reason why I'm covering this because in your case, chances could be that you might have some random digits, customer one, two, three, so on. In that case, you need to find a pattern. Now let's say I need to check that how many columns I have. Okay. So this is basically th, right? So if I just say find all the th within this table, so as you can see, five columns are getting highlighted. Can you see this? So that is our first X path, which will check all columns. Okay. So basically this is for all columns. I will just note down here. Now suppose I need to verify how many rows I have. So for rows, as we have seen, right, TR. Now if you notice the column or uh, row also is also considered as one row. So TR1 will always be your headers, right? Status company contact. But from the second one, you will start getting the actual data four five six and so on so basically this x path will verify all rows within this table within this table so this is also will verify 
Now suppose now you don't want to focus on the rows, you just want to focus on the TD because ultimately all the data is coming inside TD, right? So if I just change this to TD, you can see TH is not considered, only TD is getting considered. So as you can see the total count, I will just say all data. TD means table data and you can see total count of 30 because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 into 6, total 30. So let's try with this first and then I will show you further scenarios. Okay, now let's take one more scenario that I need to verify all these six companies are available or not. Okay, or maybe I just need to see the count or I can verify with this actual value. It could be any scenario. So in that case, if I just say that I want all the rows, but I'm looking for only first table, sorry, the first column. So you can see all the checkbox are coming, but I'm interested in let's say company names. So in this fashion, what I'm saying in all the rows, I'm only expecting TD2. Okay, so if I just say TR2, then it will only focus on this one. But if I just say that in all the table rows, I'm only interested in TD2. So you can see only company is getting highlighted. So I will just keep it here. That only second column. And let's say I need to verify the countries. In that case, if I just say 2D, sorry, TD4, you can see all the countries are getting highlighted. So basically, this is for countries. In a similar fashion, you can also do for actions, contacts, and so on. So let me quickly write a um, few scenarios based on this XPath, how to capture the values. And at the last, I will also show you that if I have to click on certain link, which is next to Java or next to Ola, or if I have to click on some checkbox before this, how we can do that. So I will quickly write one small program. This basically will capture all the table information. I will say web table demo. I already created one package. So I can go with testng junit or main method okay because our main logic will be inside the main method but if you're using JUnit testing you feel free to use this now step number one definitely we need the browser right so i'm using one web driver manager api which will handle my drivers so in case if you're new to the web driver manager i will just give you one video link in the description which will talk about how this web driver manager works so basically this web driver manager will maintain the chrome driver for us so this particular statement will download the driver and it will set the path then the next step is i need to invoke the browser so I will say web driver driver equal to new chrome driver and I will simply give the application URL okay right now this URL is coming directly for me but in your case you might have to you know continue if this table is coming after certain steps but for me the moment I open this uh, web URL immediately this table is coming so I will just use this uh, link now let's talk about the first X path that let's capture all the table headings so since we are dealing with multiple web elements i will be using something called find elements if i'm dealing with only single web element i will go with find element but since now we're dealing with web tables right and every time i will get multiple records so i will use find elements now basically this find elements will return you list of web elements right so i will just keep within a list of web elements element and i will say this is all columns not all columns i will say all headers okay now this will ask me to import list so list i will take from java.util web element is coming from openqa.selenium now once i get this list now let's say i just need to print uh, let's say the total count so i will say the size since the size method is coming from list so i can just say all header which is a list of web element and i will say dot size so it should give me five now suppose I want to capture all the values, okay? So in my case, let's say I want to capture all these values, status, company, contact, country, action. So now I'm going to write a small for each loop, okay? Which will basically capture all the details from this list of web elements. Now you can go with the standard for loop as well. That's totally up to you. Okay, I'm writing for each loop. Each time it will return me one web element. So I will keep it web element. I will give ELE, colon, and I will give this all header. Let's call this all headers. I will replace here, I will replace here. So basically what this for loop will do, it will take first web element from this list it will store into ele now i will simply capture the text okay so i will say get text so this will basically return you a string okay so let me just store into a variable called str or maybe i will just say value and let's print this value okay once we get the value then you can perform any assertion based on a requirement but as of now i will simply print and let's run this and i will also close this so that i don't have to close this manually every time and let's run this so basically chrome should start this url should start it should find all the i would say headers give me the size and it should print all the value one by one verification part i will show you how you can verify it but let's see whether it's able to print all the values or not 
so this is getting started i will maximize manually it will not do any operation it will simply capture and as you can see it is giving me all these values so let's verify so total count if you see is giving me five if i can show you the console right total count is five then it is giving me the same order so status company contact country and action right so if you want to put certain uh, validations now you can use assert okay so if you're using test ng or j unit you can use assert class so let me do one thing let me remove this okay so let me use test ng now so that you will have clear idea and i will say verify table and i will be using something called add thread test okay which is uh, coming from test ng in case if you're new to test ng then you can prefer my previous videos where we discussed about test ng so i will import this from test ng and let's say i want to put certain assertions so this is giving me count right so i will say assert which is coming from test ng and i will say assert equals okay and you can see now i can compare actual versus expected so actual is coming from all headers dot size expected is five okay so if i just say all headers dot size now it will verify if count is equal to five it will pass otherwise it will fail so i will just give one thing that uh, column count is not same or it's not matching it's totally up to you so basically this message will only get displayed when the assertion will fail if assertion is successful it will not print anything now the next assertion let's say i need to verify the country is present in the column or not okay so now i will do one thing i will just use one boolean status equal to false okay if i'm able to get the particular column i will make it true and my test case will pass otherwise it will fail now let me do one thing let me quickly check okay that whatever values we are writing inside this i'm expecting one thing called country okay so i will just use one method called contains and i will check if this value contains this country it means assertion pass otherwise failed the moment i will find this i will make status equal to false sorry true because i want to make sure that if status equal to true it means we got the value and i want to break now if you don't break what will happen it will keep on running i want to stop the moment i find my actual value and after this for loop you can write again a separate assert assert dot assert true and i will pass this something called status okay if you are not able to find the value then definitely it will have false and it will fail but if you are able to get the value status will turn into true and my assertion will pass so this is positive scenario where this assertion will pass this assertion will pass and it should close the browser so let's run it in the second iteration i will make some changes and i will pass some value which does not even exist in that case it should fail okay let's see this so again, uh, if you're not doing the operation, it will just grab the data and it should close. And you can see, count is 5. And if you notice one thing, that it is only iterating till country, right? And it is not iterating action because I found the status, I'm breaking this for loop and it is passing my test. This is positive scenario. Now let's take the negative scenario, okay? So I will pass certain value which does not even exist, okay? And in that case, it should fail. So basically, let's consider in the latest release, you have one more column okay here or maybe here now you want to verify so let's say uh, the new column let's say tools this is one uh, i will say header we are expecting and now let's see how our you know code will behave and let me add one more error message here and i will say header is not present because if my session fails i want this message so i'm just adding here so in the first iteration if everything works fine it will not add any message but in case it is failing it should add this so in my case now i'm expecting one column called tools which definitely does not exist in this case it should fail similarly you can verify this as well okay you can give some random value here if this count will not match it will fail in my case it will fail at the second assertion this is only for column in the same way you can you know do for other things as well and now you can see it failed and if i just see the console it failed because it is able to iterate all the five columns right in actions but after all the iteration it is not able to find the tools and it says header is not present expected to and false clear enough this is only for columns once you understand this principle or the concept you can apply for the same number of rows number of data i hope it is clear so let me do one thing let me change it back to country because country is present so basically this piece of code will only verify the columns let me close this and let's see the second one now i want all the rows within the tables okay so when we say all the tables sorry all the rows so number of rows are seven first one includes the column 
and the second third and so on includes the actual data so if you want to verify with headers definitely count will increase by one but if you want only the number of rows which have the actual data you can do minus one fine so in our case i will do one thing i will just write first of all one small this out okay and let me just keep in this fashion let me write driver dot find elements again by dot x path and i'm expecting number of rows so number of rows we have already taken the x path all the rows which will return me actual count okay so i will just say number of rows and if i have to actually get the size i will call dot size let me put one assert here okay assert dot assert equals actual will come from here right so i will say number of rows which is basically a list and i will just get the size and if i'm expecting seven i will say seven seven includes six basically the data okay one is column so this will pass and in case if it doesn't match i will say i will say table row count mismatched okay it's totally up to you what error message you want to keep i will just keep uh table row count mismatched and for your learning purpose i will just print the total count of rows it should be seven i will just say number of rows this is basically a list and i will call the size method number of rows dot size clear this will work so i will just add one more line here and let's see now this is very interesting guys now i will capture all the table data okay and i will actually get all the values so let me use again find elements by x path and this time i will give the x path which basically have all the table data right now this will again return me list of web elements so i will say list of web element and i will say all data now let's say from this data i want to verify whether ola is present or not right because this table data will verify all the records right so again if i show you this right i will extract all the details and i will just check if ola is present then pass my test case so i will use the same logic guys okay this is the exactly same logic so i will not take much time and i will just copy paste the same piece of code and let me also use this assert as well and here i will say uh, data status okay because i'm expecting data now so whatever data will come i will extract one by one i will capture the text and i will print the value and if i check if this value contains ola okay you can use ola over doesn't matter then i will pass this status as true break and i will say okay this is assert to only this message will only come if this is not matching and i will say record did not find or record not present whatever and this data status you can make it here okay very easy find all the records then run a for loop capture the value keep on printing okay if we found we'll make it break and this should be pass if it fails it should return this so let's do one positive scenario then we'll do the negative scenario so let's run this to take few seconds and yes it started it immediately scrapped two three i will say conditions which you have written and it should close the browser okay so it failed here okay it seems i did a small silly mistake let me just check okay so what i did that is the uh, you know problem with copy paste i did driver dot quit here right so it is not even moving further so we got one exception called no such uh, no such session exception because session id is null so what i will do i will keep this driver dot quit at the last so that it should perform all this at last it should do the driver dot quit let's run it once again okay so you should know how to read the exception because the exception trace will tell you everything about that particular exception so now let's wait it will scrap the data and here we go can you see this this is the first one which you have already seen the total row count is seven for the third one now you can see it is scrapping the data so it started from flipkart such in bunshell uh, bunshell india no more then it captured amazon jeff bezos usa no more then it captured ola and if you notice it is not even moving further because we have written break that i want to i don't want to continue after this the moment you say break it will come out of this for loop now let me write 
a negative scenario. I'm trying to find more cache within this table and definitely which is not present. So it will keep on running till the last record and then it will fail. So let's run this and this time it should print this message called record did not find or record is not present, whatever you want to keep. So yes, let's see the console. And yes, can you see it actually scrapped till the end. It started from Flipkart till Java. So you can see Flipkart first row, second row, third row, till last row it has identified, but it could not find Mokesh. So it says record did not find, expected was true and found false. Fair enough. So this is how you can verify the complete record from that particular table. And this is very useful because you don't know, right, at which place your record will come. It could be at the first place, last place. So you need to scrap all the data and then you need to verify. Now this is basically for second row, last row, depends on which, uh, not actually row, this is for the columns, second column, fourth column. So if I again show you this X path, TD2 will verify only company name, TD3 will only uh, refer contacts, TD4 for countries, and the last one is for actions, right? So let me do one thing, let me keep a uh, company. Okay, I want to verify the total count is six and I want to again verify Java is present or not. So let's do one thing, same stuff, this is out so that I can show you the next assertion. Then I will copy paste this. See guys, this is very important, okay? So once you understand how to capture the data, verification is very easy. So in this case, I will just change the X path that I need, so not this one, right? From all the rows, I'm only expecting TD2 with the second column. And I will say this is second column or to be more precise, I will say company names, right? And I will pass here because I want to iterate this part. And this I will say company status because I want to verify company name, right? It will print all these values and uh, this I will just change here. This also I will change. And if we're not able to find, I will say could not find company. Fine. Let's cross verify company names. The status is false. It will keep iterating. And yes, at the first iteration or in the positive scenario, I will search for Java. Company name Java should exist. If it exists, it will pass. In case if it is not, it should print this. Let's run this. Okay guys, if you notice one thing that I'm repeating this, right? So you can create a small library for this where you just need to pass the actual value. So the expected value and the X bar, then it will do this. So since we have all positive scenarios, so you can see it captured all these uh, company names. It started from Flipkart, Amazon, Ola, Selenium. At last it found Java and it worked. But again, if I give the wrong scenario that I'm expecting, let's say Tesla in this company names. If it is not able to find Tesla, it will say could not find this. Let me close this and yes, it should fail this time and it will fail only at the last assertion, which we have just written, right? And yes, you can see it identified all these. Finally, it says assertion error, could not find company expected true, but found false. Okay. So I hope you got the clear idea what exactly I'm trying to you know, explain here. Please try, try from your end. And before we end this video, let me also show you the scenario. Let's say I want to click and this is a uh, important interview question as well, guys. Okay, because in companies, they will give you such scenarios where you need to find a record. And before that record, you want to do some actions. It could be type click or you want to do some, you know, other activities. So if I just show you that I want to click to a checkbox, which is just before Selenium, how you can do that. So first of all, I need to find Selenium, right? So I will write find a TD and I'm expecting a text called Selenium. Okay, we got it. But I want to click on the checkbox, which is just before this Selenium. Now I will be using something called XPath Access. I will write following. So basically, if you say following, it will go in a forward direction. I will just say proceeding. Okay, double colon and I will say TD. The moment you say proceeding TD, you can see just before the Selenium, it is able to identify all. Right, but here's a small twist. Let me just do one thing. This is identifying all the TD. But if you see closely, guys, Selenium is present here, right? So this is their siblings, right? 
this is next td this is again next td and this is no more and this is again the sibling so instead of preceding i will say preceding okay preceding hyphen sibling double colon td so you can see it is identifying the sibling which is of td but if you open this td it has one input box as well right so i will say double slash input okay so this is your x path if you have to traverse in a reverse direction so first i will find that particular text then i will say preceding if you see just preceding it will identify all but i want preceding sibling and i will just search for td inside the td we also had one input box so i will just use this x path okay i will just change it to java because i want to have the positive scenarios and the last two one it will simply click now guys since this is single web element right i will say find element by x path and dot uh, click because this is just a checkbox right i will say dot click you notice it will simply click on this guy now let's say i want to click on this link for ola okay so almost same but instead of following sorry instead of proceeding i will be using following because i have to traverse in a forward direction right so let's say i want to click here no more so first of all i will say find a td which has a text called ola right now i have to you know move in a forward direction i will say following double colon this is the syntax and i will search for td so when i say following td it is identifying all instead of this i will say following sibling td so you can see td3 total 1 to 3 one sibling second sibling third sibling i am expecting third sibling which is no more right if you open this td again you will find anchor link so i will say inside this td i have call anchor link and i want to click on this so driver dot find element by dot x path and i will say dot click again guys if you are new to x path then you can refer my videos where we discussed how to write x path there i have explained these things in detail so it's all about the x path game now if you are able to write the x path you can traverse in forward direction reverse direction you can find ancestors okay you can find parents and so on so yeah that's all so i will just comment this because i want to show you that it will click and it should open ola side and this will just click on the check box so let me quickly run this program and let's verify the output so guys i will give you this link in the description please try this code from your side once you are able to understand this example then try with your application okay so you can see first actually clicked on uh, you know selenium then it clicked on ola so you can see this is still checked since it is opening in the same page so it clicked on ola and so it clicked on no more it was opening olacaps.com and you can see all things are passed okay so please try from your end okay and if you want all the values to be printed you can remove this break okay so let me do one thing uh let me remove this break so that you can see all the records and i will remove this as well and let's run this and just to show you the uh, actual click operation i will just add thread dot sleep of 5 seconds so that you can see this click operation so let me just keep through and let's see let me close the previous one okay it will scrap the data it will do assertion in the background you can see it clicked on selenium after 5 seconds it will click on no more and here we go it is opening olacaps.com fine so that's very easy please give a try and if you want i can give you a small recap that what are the things we have done in this video so first of all we started web driver manager so this particular statement basically will deal with the chrome driver it will set the path automatically then it will start the browser it will open the url then it's all about xpath so we discussed how to write the xpath right when i say th it will verify all the columns when i say tr it will identify all the table rows including the headers as well so if you want to actually verify only the table row which does not include header you can do minus 1 after getting the size td it will actually calculate all the table data and this is if you want to traverse only space fixed second column fourth column and these are the two xpath we have written in a preceding and in a following as well so i will just keep it here this one so i will just keep all this uh, xpath in the description of this video so please go ahead and just cross check from your end 
and when it comes to code side it's uh, you know very straightforward in order to deal with multiple web elements use find elements which will return a list of web elements get the size you can do the assertion and uh, in order to iterate i'm using enhance for loop but you can go with the normal for for loop as well so if you want i can just show you how you can do with normal for loop if you don't want to go with for each loop it will look something like this it will start from zero then it will go till the size of this list right so i'll say company name dot size and i plus plus clear now since this is my list right i will say company names dot get get is a method of list which will actually get the value based on the index since we are using i as the index here which will keep on changing right it will start from 0 1 2 3 4 and so on so every time this get method will return me one web element i will store into web element then i will just say element dot get text which will return a string right i will say value and this value i will verify i will check here if value dot contains java okay then we will simply keep this company status equal to true and this assertion is anyway same so this for loop basically we replaced with this normal for loop so if i will comment this code okay still it will work in the same fashion break so it's totally up to you if you're not comfortable with this for each loop or enhance for loop you can go with this normal for loop as well clear let me run this and let's end the session after that yes let it run and yeah okay we got all the values in the background it clicked on the checkbox and it will click on ola yeah and if you see no changes in the output because we are still doing the same thing it is just in 